and welcome to part three on our topic of manipulation. In part one, we looked at this from the girl side. In part two, we took a look at it from the guy side based on the questions that were submitted. In this part, we're taking a deeper look into my experience in the pickup artist world, why I left, and some of the problems I have with it today. We also explored the concept of leagues and other important considerations when dating or in a committed relationship. Now, I do want to let everybody know we did experience some audio difficulties with this episode. There are some small sections where it is not exactly the best. Now, we did what we could in order to tame those interruptions, but they may still be noticed by some listeners. So we just want to let you know about that. There's also, this episode is running a little bit longer than our normal episodes. We normally keep everything around 28 to roughly 30 minutes. This one is going to run a little bit longer than that, simply because a lot of this information is something people are asking about, and we want to make sure we address it from all the different angles that we possibly could. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into part three on the topic of manipulation. Yeah, as far as being like a pickup artist and all that stuff, yeah. you learn how to manipulate people and it's not a section of my life that I'm actually proud about, but I think it's important that girls and guys, or at least girls who are not aware that this stuff actually exists, mm -hmm. become aware of the tactics that guys are learning to use. Now, there are actual schools out there for girls to learn how to do the same thing. What I found is that at least when I was an active instructor, is that the things that we were using on girls works on guys as well. Right. It was just twisted just a little bit to make it fit. For girls to learn or to know that this stuff actually happens, you can go out, you can look it up. Yeah. There are books written on Amazon. There are books sold at your local bookstore. Go to YouTube, just type in pickup art and you will see these courses being taught and these guys actively going out using these tactics on girls yeah. and pretty much getting the girl. Of course, you always see that they all get the girl. They don't show the other 54 times that they actually didn't get her. Of course. But nobody's going to buy the course if the guy's always striking out. Right. Yeah, learn the tactics, learn the steps, learn the tricks, learn everything. I mean, I personally work in the realm of if you have to manipulate someone to do it, you pr either A, they don't want to do it and you shouldn't force anyone to do something, but also... Um, B, if you have to manipulate, you're not a very good person. You should be able to talk to a person, especially if you want to date them. Like I said, there's a difference between transactional, you know, like, and I will repeat it. There's nothing wrong with a transactional relationship if that is what you want. But if you're seriously looking to become, if you're looking for something serious with somebody and they want something purely transactional, as in, I will do this for you only if you do that for me. Then no, the you you can't sign yourself up for that and expect the person to change. They've yeah. already told you who they are. Now, when I'm out and about town and I see somebody that I want that I would like to get to know better, either uh, because she's attractive looking or there's something about her that catches my attention, then yes, I will use some of these tactics to actually gain her attention so that we can actually engage in a conversation. But if she's not interested, I don't push the issue like I used to. That's where the manipulation comes in is where I would actually used to push the issue in order to pull her back in, right. make it look like, it, well, if you don't talk to me, you're missing out on the best thing in your life. Right. Yeah, I don't do that anymore. She's not interested. Huh, well, it was nice meeting you. I mean, it, there's no manipulation to it. Yep. And. I, now I learned what works for me and it works with most girls. Yeah. I'm not going to say it works with every girl. I'm I'm not one of those guys who's 100%. That would be insane. If I was doing that, I'm in the lo wrong line of work. Trust me. I mean, on average, I would say I'm eh, eh, 60, 70 on an excellent day, maybe 80%, but that's rare. But it's usually 60, 70% of the girls that I meet, they either I'm either able to get an actual date with them because I'm not interested in phone numbers. Phone numbers for chumps as far as I'm concerned. I hate getting Google numbers. 
try. <laughs> yeah, those piss me off. But I either get a date or, hey, it was nice hanging out with you and we will become friends after that. I mean, that's pretty much it. But there's no reason that a guy should have to go out there and manipulate a girl right. to get her to do what he wants. You really shouldn't have to manipulate anyone to get anything done. I mean, yeah. Like I said, if you're honest about who you are and your intentions, if you say, I'm only in this to sleep with you, and they know that, you are not, you're not manipulating them. Yeah. You know, whether they spin it or not, you know, and, they, and actually, I'd say it's a form of, like, reverse manipulation when they go, that's okay, that's fine, and then they think, well, if she sleeps with me once, then we're going to keep trying to do, you know, I'm going to keep trying to get with her. That, that, to me, is more manipulative. Yeah. Well, that's what pisses me off about where the whole pickup artist world went, is it went from... Just trying to become better at becoming social. I mean, for extroverts, it's it's hard to understand. Right. Uh, for introverts, especially an introvert that enters into any kind of sales position, I mean, they usually suck at sales. But they're not sociable. They're yeah. not being sociable and going into a convention to actually network and meet other people. It's just, it terrifies the hell out of them. And I'm a natural introvert. I don't like getting out there in mm -hmm. public. I mean, I can do it now. I mean, I've become a lot more extroverted. I'm more comfortable in those situations because of what I learned. And being able to go out and being able to strike up a conversation with a girl who is who anybody would look at and go, oh, she's out of your league. Yeah, I don't believe in leagues. That's, how, that's why I don't believe in leagues anymore. It doesn't matter. I've been out with CEOs. I've been out with models. I've been out with actresses. I'm Joe Nobody. Pretty much blue collar, military, truck driver. Those were my jobs. Me going out with an actress shouldn't happen. And a lot of people's definition, that should never happen. Right. They're way outside of your league. I call bullshit. I've done it. Yeah, no, there's no, first of all, there's no such thing as a league. I've seen no ghastly looking people with gorgeous people before. Um, and that's why I don't believe in leagues because I think it's all about who makes you happy and, you know, being proud of whoever the hell that is. It's hard enough in this world to be happy and then find someone who makes you happy. Um, it doesn't matter what they look like or who they are as long as you're happy. Who gives a shit? Yeah, I've gone out with uh, quote unquote power women. I mean, women yeah. who have really worked their way up the corporate ladder and say going out with. A, an actress. The only way that those people are going to be out of your league is if you get starstruck or you cannot handle their lifestyle. You can't handle the red carpet. You can't handle the premieres. You can't handle the, the shooting schedule, the rehearsal schedules, right. the board meetings, the late night call ups and everything else that just interrupts your life. If you cannot handle that, then yeah, I could say that they're out of your league. You cannot handle that lifestyle. You cannot handle the demands that their life puts on you. Then they're going to be out of your league. If you can't put up with their popularity and everybody wanting their address, wanting an arm hold, hug, kiss, and everything else, yeah, they're out of your league. you got to be able to handle it. Yeah, if we put leagues in that perspective, if you can't handle someone's lifestyle, who they are, like whether they're an actress you know, or a criminal or any of that kind of stuff, um, yeah, then I guess we, I would call, I would say that person's absolutely out of your league because you have to have this, you know, emotional maturity to say, okay, well, we may not, you know, this person's busy. It's not that they are, you know, it's not, it's not that they don't yeah. give a shit about you. It's not that they don't care about you. It's not that they wouldn't love to spend time with you. Yeah. Yeah. It has nothing to do with beauty or popularity. You know, made it, well, popularity a little bit. It's kind of like, uh, I don't know the girl who spends all day in the library going out with the varsity uh, football. Oh, yeah, 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 like the nerd thing. Yeah, the the geek and the popular. I mean, yeah, if if the geek cannot handle the popular's right. uh, popularity and all their friends and the parties and all that stuff, and he can't handle sitting around playing magic right. for 18 hours yeah <laughs> there's that that's a difference i mean it's bullshit it's but, definitely bullshit yeah but leagues based on looks and all this other stuff yeah i don't i don't buy it that just falls apart 
you show me their lifestyles. I always use Airbnb as an yeah. example. Yeah, you show me their lifestyles, then we Somebody, then we'll talk. Right. I mean, think about this: three people married Gary Busey. Three. So if three, and, and, and it's not that he's not a funny, he's a funny, funny guy. He's he's hilarious. He cracks me up. Yeah. How many women married uh, Johnny Carson? Right. <laughs> I mean, talk about a busy schedule. That I mean, that was a nightly show. I mean, the hours that he put in on that is mainly what it wasn't his. It wasn't his personality. From everything that I've read, I've never met him personally, but from everything I've read, he was a very likable person. But he carried some crazy hours preparing for each and every guest that went on that show. Absolutely. You have to, I mean, you have to know the person. Yeah, you have to know what you're getting into. And just like this guy. Right. He just literally laid it out for us. He knows what he's getting into. If he decides to go out with her, I mean, talk about concise. This is concise. He has a crush on her. He knows what she's about. He Now he wants to know if it's normal. Well, we've answered that. Yes, it's normal. Should he try if you're willing to become her slave? If you, yeah, if you are okay with that type of person. You're going to be her emotional slave. Absolutely. If you are okay with it, because some people enjoy that dynamic. Some people like dynamics where, you know what, they want to be in a relationship with somebody who provides for them because they don't want to work. And that's fine. Some people want to take care of somebody. Yeah. That, to me, means it's the perfect match. If you want somebody who is going to not be transactional and you want something super emotional and connective and all that stuff, I mean, if you talk to her and she's into it, then you might get lucky. But if you know exactly who she is, don't be surprised when she acts exactly who she is. Is that simple? I, mean, I, I do want that emotional connection, but I also want her to be herself. If you're not an emotional person, that's fine. Right. So long as we're able to communicate because the communication builds the emotional connection. Just be open and honest with me. That when I'm talking about emotional co connection, that's what I'm talking about right. is that communication level. Now, I don't mind the touchy feely stuff. That's fine. Just not 100% of the time. I'm not a PDA person. I hate PDA. I hate it. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's certain amounts of it now, hey, the sucking face in the quad, no. Now, now, guys get a bonus point for that because other guys see that and they're like, oh, yeah, dude, yeah. The girls, whether you're aware of it or not, they, guys, women take a huge hit for that. Yeah, it's disrespectful. We get bonus points. They get demoted. It's that judgment. Oh, look at her. Yeah, we know what she is. Yeah. Yeah, but holding hands, stuff like that, eh. Sometimes it's okay. Sometimes, eh. I mean, it's it's a judgment call. Well, I mean, like holding hands is uh, mm -hmm. it's it's. it's uh, I've just never been that kind of person. A giant Pierre. I'm very very bedroom esque when it comes to stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I I can go for I can take it or leave it. I mean, sometimes it's nice, but it's not a requirement. I mean, it, like a yeah, it's not, yeah. I mean, usually all that stuff happens in the honeymoon phase, and then once the honeymoon phase is over, it's like eh, it's, whatever. Yeah, I'm not even about the honeymoon phase, to be honest with you. I'm trying to get to the 12 years in, <laughs> like, you can fight around each other kind of deal. That's who I am. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just be human. I mean, that that's that's really what I'm, what I'm looking for. Now, I right. do have the characteristics that I look for, but be human. Yeah, human is a big one for me. Like, realistically human, too. I, I can't do the, the fake humanist, like the... um. I don't know, like the hippie kind of deal. I'm cool with a little like enlightenment and all that stuff, but like someone who constantly wants to have emotional deep talks and constantly needs to, oh, no. you know, it's, I just, no. I can't. No, I mean, it, the emotional deep talks, no. I mean, it, all that once in a while, maybe, but I mean, I'm not looking at sitting there and so how do you feel about that? I'm not a psychiatrist. Yeah, all day I can. I mean, I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a psychologist. I've office? studied that stuff, but I studied it for my own education because I wanted to know. I wanted to know the truth. Right. Because all this stuff online, most of it is snake oil, for lack of a better term. It's bullshit. A lot of the stuff in the books is written off of other books. I mean, that's... I I learned how to how to write those books from a guy who sold like millions of copies. When I talked to him, yeah, he copied the stuff out of other books. He just spun it. 
put it together a different way, shelved it up, printed it, and he sold millions of copies. I mean, he literally just plagiarized a bunch of other people Mm -hmm. without plagiarizing them. So he he took snake oil and made worse snake oil. Absolutely. I've always learned that a good plan mixed with a bad plan is a bad plan. And people buy this crap, especially about relationships. Oh, my gosh. I mean, yeah, there's no right way. There is not a single book in this world, unless you're talking about like trauma or dealing with, you know, certain types of aspects of your partner's personality, stuff like that works. Yeah. But like, realistically, people, there's no right way to go about it. Some people are in transactional relationships. Some people are in these deep emotional connections. I don't give a shit. You do what makes you happy and that will make me happy. I have a couple of tips here and there that can possibly shave a little bit of heartache off of stuff, but I'm not a master of anything. I mean, really, yes, I'm good in certain areas. I don't have answers for everything. Yeah. I'm just a guy who knows a bunch of stuff. And now in the pickup world, yeah, I would be labeled a quote unquote master. They call themselves that? Woohoo. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. You have masters. How much? How much of a virgin do you have to be to call yourself a master? Oh, they just. The more I hear about I the pickup artist world, it just seems like a bunch of virgins speculation, speculating on things they think women like. No, actually, it's some of it has become pretty much an exact science for certain types of women. I mean, I can, I can point you in a direction of one pickup artist, and you're going to get. The super hot girl that has been shooting down every guy all night long, but she's going to be damaged. She's going to have low self-esteem in one area or another. Yeah, uh, I can point you to in another direction. You're going to get the girl next door, but the techniques that you use on her will not work on Miss Super Hot. The techniques for the girl next door is not going to work. <laughs> Daddy issue girl. Uh, <laughs> I've got another one I can point you in the direction and you can train underneath that person and you're going to get that super power woman. I mean, like the corporate CEO, she's a rock hard ice bitch on the outside. No nonsense bitch. Yeah. And she's like emotionally fucking drained on the inside. Like she's just garbage. No, actually Um, on the inside, she's uh, no, on the inside, she's absolutely the the most perfect person that you could ever know. But you have to get through that hard exterior in order to break through that wall. Oh, okay. The secret good guy. Yeah. the Yeah. I mean, she's the one that you, yeah, you get her home and all she wants to do is just cuddle up and go to sleep. The Liz Lemon. But no one technique works. And that's, that's one of the reasons I got out of it is because I wasn't finding the girl that I wanted. Plus, I also saw, like I mentioned, I think on episode five, where I mentioned I saw what this, what I was doing and the damage that it caused and just the the trail of heartache that I left behind me. Right. And it, yeah, I mean, it, oh my God, I can't tell you that, that tore me up. There's a human. Yeah. Right. Because you're not a piece of garbage. Um. Like I said, I'm not the the biggest fan of the concept of pickup artists or any of that stuff. Really, I'm old fashioned, and and most most people aren't. I mean, I don't fault anybody for right. it. I mean, it's it works for some. For me, when I was severely depressed, mm-hmm. looking back at what I learned, because really, it's it was like a whole integral. You're going to do this self help workshop. I mean, it, months and years long. Right. I just picture a bunch of Johnny Bravos. That's all I picture. And you wouldn't be wrong. You would not be. Actually, if you want a a very good view, it it only lasts for one season. And he goes by the name Mystery. This guy is like, you look at him and he's like way out in left field. The guy, he's an awesome guy though. He really is. Once you get past the whole pickup artist thing, he's he's a really good guy. Mm -hmm. But look up the show, Pickup Artist. It only ran for one season. And look at the guy's that are on that show and then look at the transformation that they went through, where they start from, where they ended up. And you'll see that transformation. Right. I can see yeah. it being like this amazing emotional breakthrough oh, yeah. kind of thing. I can see the value and I just, ugh, when I think of, I, I don't know. Because the manipulation that happens. Uh, well, they're so associated also with, um, I don't know if you're familiar with incels, 
but they're very, very much um, associated with them. Yeah, and if you've ever be. seen an incel. Well, these are like incels trying to not become incels. Right. So I can see it's like it's like the step before. Um, I just yeah. watched this. I watched like six or seven documentaries on incels because I find them to be quite fascinating creatures on how one person can be so obsessed with sex and not get any. And when I saw them talking to pickup artists, it was just the way they talked about women. And it was very, very misogynistic. Off yeah. And, and disgusting, really. So I, I get it. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons I got out of it. And the reason that if I do decide to train somebody, I do, they need to prove to me. I mean, it, it's almost like um, Hitch. Like martial arts. Yeah. Yeah. I want, well, martial arts for one, because I'm not going to train, train somebody to go out there and, and kill. Just right kick anybody's ass who looked at them the wrong way. I'm also not going to train somebody on how to manipulate women just so that they can have another trophy to brag about. Right. And I will not do it. I mean, I will not, I will not train pieces of shit. Right. Exactly. That's what it comes down to. I don't care how you polish it. It's still shit. And Lord help me if I actually catch them doing that while I am training them. Because if you can't gracefully leave and leave the leave the girl alone, right. then, yeah, you do not need my help. You need a psychologist. No. Yeah, you need to probably go to jail, too, because you're probably a rapist. And I think that's what it comes down to for me, is is seeing these men intentionally manipulate women into having sex with them um, and using these mind tactics, not even, not even to date them. You know, literally wasting their time just so that they can brag about, you know, oh, I slept with this woman, I slept with that yeah. woman. That's just nonsense. Like, after a certain age, and, and, and I fully believe that after you graduate high school, if you are still trying to bang women to prove something to your friends, you are a garbage yeah, human. Uh, I mean, I get the whole college environment and stuff like that. I'll, I'll kind of give a slight pass to that. But if you're, if there are guys out there who are, strictly trying to just run as many girls as they possibly can just to say that they can, that's not okay. Right. Because like I said, the, the emotions It's abusive. It's it's and abuse. it's emotional abuse because em, like I said, emotions are a woman's Achilles heel. Because it's just how men and women think and it's how, how we were raised. Girls played with girls when they were little. Boys played with boys when we were little. It wasn't until really fifth grade middle school that we started kind of noticing each other a little bit more. And then we became a little bit more integrated. In sixth grade, but those yeah. formative years established how we think and how we operate. Girls played with dolls. Guys broke toys. <laughs> Bullshit. Yeah. Gender constructs and all that shit, man. Yeah. That's a whole new topic and, for a whole nother day. <laughs> yeah. And so girls tend to think more with their emotions and oh my gosh, women are brutal to each other. Guys will oh, just yeah. will just lay into each other and start fighting. Girls uh, fights don't happen no, that much. They will life. they will ruin your life. <laughs> Yeah, it will ruin your fucking life. And like vindictively too, yeah. with no problem. Because that's just how we are. We're disgusting people too. Um girls are not without faults by any means. Um actually. Yeah. Um and girls do manipulate and like this guy said, he's he's he knows he sees that this girl is using men to get what she wants. He sees it. So he knows. Yeah. Brother, do not come complaining to me when she uses you and you ain't got shit to show for it. Because you know who she is. When someone shows you yeah. who they are, believe them the first time. Yeah, so when you hear this episode and you're going back and you're writing back into us, asking us, now what do I do? Well, I've already told you. You knew what you were getting into before you got into it, and you still decided to go down that road. And you're surprised. You and know what I mean? And, and you're like, yeah, what? she's not going to change. She's not going to change until she's probably 60 years old and, at, and had 52 plastic surgeries. Right. Until and her she, ears are, are, ne, are now her eyebrows. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean that's, that's just the nature of it because once the beauty starts to leave, they try and hold on to that beauty. Yeah, which is useless. And, I mean, guys are the same way. I mean, you start losing your hair, you start doing yeah, the Yeah, and then they start thing. going to Bosley and like <laughs> – Oh, men are ridiculous too about their hair. 
I, gr- men are worse about their hair oh, than yeah. girls are. Girls are more. Well, it's really yeah. the only thing we got. Yeah. <laughs> Girl, yeah, we have bigger problems. <laughs> yeah, or you go bald and then you start just growing the beard. <laughs> That's how you do it. It just migrate down the face. Right. That is true. They do do that a lot. But I mean, I've I've known pickup artists who are great guys, and they they didn't try and at least the group that I was with, we weren't we were just trying to figure out how to meet the how to find the woman right. we actually wanted to find. But because of yeah, you guys just wanted to either talk. how we walked, how we talked, how we carried ourselves. I mean, there was something mm-hmm. that w- there was a vibe that we were giving off that was just it was repulsive. We just had to figure out what that vibe was. Once we corrected the vibe, hey, now the girl that wouldn't give us time of day right. now won't get away from us. Yeah, now we're catching the batshit crazy ones that we used to not, not have a problem with. Been down that road too. A uh, couple right. episodes now back. Right, now she's annoying the shit out of me. I'm <laughs> but, punch her. Guy, you know what you're getting into? If you want to go down that road, go down that road. If not, hey, go find somebody else. There's over. I forget what the last count is. What, there's 6 billion people on this planet? Cool. Cut that in half. There's 3 billion. No, cut that in half. Yeah. Half. Yeah. Cut that in half because there's probably half of those are underage women. And well, do not sleep with other Actually, you would cut it more into like a a fourth because let's, okay, so one quarter isn't, they're going to be out of your age range. I mean, they're too old for you. Then you got the ones that are too young for you. Then you got the ones that, they're just nowhere near what you're even looking for. So what? That's still a couple right. hundred million women that are probably within what you are looking for to choose from on this planet. Right. But we got 300 million just here in the United States. Now, 300 million, let's see, let's 25 million. If you can't. I'm one, then you are the problem. <laughs> like, if, or sorry. Yeah, there's something wrong with yeah. you. You need to you need to check yourself and take a look, find out what is not working for you. And the only way you're going to do that is go talk to women. I mean, the only way the only way that I got good and I suppose a master is because I kept going out and I kept failing and I kept looking at why I was failing. I have failed more. Than the amateur has even right. tried. That's all it's about. That's honestly, I've said this to people and they don't believe me. I am one of the biggest failures you will ever meet in your entire life. And I mean, when I say fail, I fail hard, man, constantly. And it's because I do, if I want to do something, I go do it. And does that mean I'm always going to be successful? Yeah. Absolutely not. But I'm going to go out there. I'm going to fail. I'm going to learn from that. And the only way you're going to learn to be in a successful relationship is if you go out there and you get in one. Actually, uh, there really isn't. In, I've run businesses. Actually, I don't even call them business stuff. I call them money-making opportunities because I was always employed. So it was like mm-hmm. a side, quote-unquote, business that I made money at, maybe. But I never failed. I either, I either won or I learned. I didn't fail. If I'm learning from my failures, I'm not failing. I'm right. learning. I apply that to the next one. Just like when I, I used, when I walked right. up to girls, I used to actually carry a recorder in my pocket so I could hear what I said. And I, I go, no, get the fuck away from me. Or, she, or it actually went good. I'm like, okay, so what did I, what did I do? Why did she, why did she agree? And why did she not agree? I go back and I listen to it. I'm like, Oh God, that's how I sounded. There was no confidence in my voice whatsoever. And uh, this one, I was stumbling all over my words. This one, I didn't even make sense. That's how I learned. Right. It sounds really creepy, but I used to, we actually used to record, have a guy with a video recorder and he would actually video us so we could look at our body language. How are we standing? How are we using our hands? Are we get, are we too close? Are we too far away? As weird as that sounds, it makes a lot of sense. It's not it's not necessarily like it's not weird in a sense of um it's weird. Well, it's kind of weird if you knew else. that yeah. you're being recorded. Right. It's weird in yeah. that way. But like if you're if you're actively trying to meet women and you're trying to figure out, you know, what what you're doing that's off putting to women, then no, no, no. It's it's just like a comic, you know? You go you do stand up. Yeah. When you do stand up, you record yourself every time because you're trying to figure out what works and what doesn't. So it's it, it is fucking weird, but it's not like 
the weirdest. Yeah. And we used, we did the same thing with girls because, I mean, for girls, it's really strange trying to train a girl on how to approach guys because it's it really, I mean, it's becoming better, but really it's still not done. All right. And so, I mean, we would, okay, go over there and just pick that guy. But I don't know anything. Just talk to him. But yeah. I, I mean, and she, she would actively refuse to do it. And well, then like, you're not oh, going to get better and don't complain when you're still single and 50 years old and have seven cats. It's, yeah. it, it's crazy to me how, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm not an introvert and you're right because I'm naturally an extrovert and most of my jobs that I do, um, they involve me talking to people. Um, I've been in entertainment most of my, or media for most of my life. So I talk to people. Um, so I can't even begin to imagine any of these things being a problem. And maybe that's why I'm so careful about it. You know, I'm like, we'll just fucking talk to them. But well, for some people, I guess that's yeah. difficult. Well, that, I think that's also what gives a, gives a great dynamic to the listeners because we are so opposite. Yeah. Because I'm an introvert and I went through all of this training in order to learn how to become you. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's not that fun, is it? And, no. It's, it's true, though. We are very, very... Yeah, um, I did not have to go through any training. I would never... Um, I believe that the easiest way to talk to someone is just say hi. Yeah. And I found out that, well, when I went up and I was, hi, and she turned around and go, hi. And then I, then I sit there with a stupid look on my face like, okay, now what? <laughs> you said you something. Said, back? <laughs> Fuck, you weren't supposed yeah. to do that. <laughs> or, or I would I'd be sitting at, uh, I remember the first time I actually, I actually got one of the, like the really really hot girls i was like holy shit this worked now what and we're sitting over in a booth in in the in this club because i mean we never did anything half-assed we'd pool our money together and we'd go with wine service yeah you bottle get service. the bottle service and all that shit. so i'm sitting over here in this yeah three hundred dollars to talk to somebody oh, no. i mean three hundred bucks that wasn't nothing i mean we're like talking three thousand dollars a night that's retarded I would never. Oh, well, we were making, uh, what, we had 200 guys, $1,500 a weekend. So we were making some coin. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I guess if you're making it, it's fun. But, like, to go out one night, yeah, there's no, just to go meet someone, absolutely not. Well, actually, we were training guys to go meet them. And we were, but anyways, I got this, I got some really, really hot girls. We're sitting over there in this booth. And, I mean, she's. I mean, we've gotten past the little small talk stuff and now we're, we're like into the active flirting phase, but actually beyond that, we got our hands all over each other and she's got her legs draped across me and practically hugging me and pulling me into her. I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? (laughs) I mean, I didn't know what the hell to do. It wasn't until, um, one of the other guys came over and he's like, Hey man, come here. I, uh, I got to borrow him for a sec. And he just, just like, teach you this real quick. he just like slaps me in the face and goes, kiss her. I'm like what? Yeah. I'm like, like what? what? And it's like, kiss her. But dude, I mean, yeah, she's but, like literally all over you. Yeah. And I'm not seeing it. <laughs> and oh. yeah. And the first time anything actually serious happened, like up in the bedroom, serious type happening. Yeah, that didn't happen. <laughs> I am like... I mean, it was like, uh, oh my gosh, this is actually happening. And yeah. I'm like morally um, ambiguous. So things like that happen. <laughs> I'm just like, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, it just... Yeah. A lot of guys, they think, oh yeah. Because I, I got this one guy at work and he's always... It, it's kind of creepy, but he's like, Selena Gomez, she's the hottest thing in the world. And I'm like... You know, she's 21 now, but when he first discovered her, she was like 12. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's but he correct. still goes on and on and on about her. And I'm just, I'm, I mean, she's attractive. I mean, probably on, she's right. on, on a scale of one to 10, my, I'm, me knowing exactly what my 10 is, eh, she's probably about a seven. Yeah, no, actually, I'd put her there too. She's really talented though. So that, like, yeah, she is talented. And, Personality wise, I mean, it, it, that could boost her up to a nine, but oh, I've never no, personally met her. Yeah, so. like I can't, I can't rate her personality just based on interviews because no, 
No, because the interviews, what, most of those interviews are scripted. A lot of people don't know right. that. A lot of the interviews are scripted. And they're they going to be talking be. points. Absolutely. They have to sell a movie. Yeah. You know, this is a movie see, or an album. Is, yeah. But I'm, I'm a media person. So <clears> like, I know how that shit works. And so I don't, I love TV um, more than anything probably in my life, but I know how that shit works, you know? Like, <laughs> so I know when how I see, it works on the Hollywood side. I mean, yeah. I, but I mean, when they say, when they're going around for the ABCs, I know exactly what they're talking about. Right. And it's it's all it's got to be it's it's a business that's what people forget like they're they're not being paid to be there because they're awesome people they're being paid to be there because they're about to make a company hundreds of thousands if not millions of dollars depending on who's marketing what into who and what, yeah. what they're and, if they, and if they want to get another job they need to make sure people go see it right because you're only as good as your last one absolutely yeah. So but, we're excellent because yeah. this is a great episode. But these guys, I mean, they, they're sitting there, oh, this girl, this girl, this girl, this girl. And I guarantee you put him and her or her and him in a bedroom. The one that they're fantasizing about disrobes and says, do me now. They're not going to be able to do shit. Right. It's just the way it happened because your fantasy is now happening and your fan and you just it just went out the window. Because now you don't know what the hell to do. That's the reality of it. So, yeah, guys want to, he's got a crush on this girl. He finds her extremely attractive. She's actually not going to manipulate him if if it turns out that she actually likes him. Yeah, it's not going to happen first time around. Because he's got this fantasy built up in his head. And when that fantasy happens, he's not going to be able to perform. Right. That's just the reality of it. Girls, it can be a little bit different. I mean, not so many moving parts. <laughs> yeah. Still got everything that happened up inside your head. I mean, physically it could work, but yeah, mentally it's like, what the fuck? Am I doing this right? Uh, 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 uh. Left, right? <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to wrap this topic up here. Let us know if we answer the questions we received. Did we cover the topic in depth enough? Was there something you expected but didn't hear? Leave us a comment. Visit the girlsaskguyshow.com website and let us know what's on your mind. Again, we thank you for listening and we really do appreciate you taking your time with us. Now go out there and be the star you were meant to be. Live life on your terms. And together, we will learn to master this thing called life together. This has been a production of the Girls Ask Guys Show. Visit us over at thegirlsaskguyshow.com where you can subscribe to our newsletter, submit your questions, and request to be a guest on the show. Please rate our show and leave us some honest feedback to let us know how we are doing. We really appreciate everyone listening, and we will talk to you on the next one.